church this afternoon to celebrate his life and to thank God for the years that he lived in this world and of course to pray that his soul make this journey into God's everlasting kingdom of heaven. At this point we will all stand as we will bless the coffin and we will have the procession to the altar and for this we will sing enter into Jerusalem for the procession. Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
In the waters of holy baptism, John Russell Loney died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May his soul be admitted into the eternal glory of God our Father forever and ever. Amen. Amen. sisters and brothers on behalf of the entire Loney family we warmly welcome all of you in this church this afternoon to celebrate his life and as we have come together to renew our trust in Jesus Christ who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven we pray for our brother John that he may share in Christ's victory over death as we pray also for ourselves as pilgrims fellow travelers to God's kingdom, that the Lord may grant us the gift of his love and protection, kindness, compassion, mercy, and consolation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated now for the eulogy. Good afternoon, everyone. The program lists me as Harold Hendry, Russell's brother-in-law. And yes, I am. But there's this old saying that when you marry into a family, you inherit that family. And while I'm not a sibling, I have to share with you all that I feel as close to Russell 
as I am because of the brotherhood we quietly built during the 53 plus years that I have known him. Russell is my big brother. Without question, today is a sad day for all of us. But I'm asking everyone present and those watching the broadcast on YouTube to look beyond our sadness and look deep in our hearts and minds and reflect for a few minutes with me on the legacy of John Russell Loney. By that I mean, please join me in taking a look at the collection of tangible and intangible memories and feelings that we will forever hold for Russell. I also think about the key elements of the immense presence that he has had in our lives and will always have. These memories and feelings that I'm talking about are those that will bring forth the joy, yes, the joy that may well be deeply buried inside our sadness. To find that joy, I ask that we collectively think for just a few minutes about the Russell that we all know and love. And the joy that his winning smile brought in our lives, brought into our lives for whatever part of the 78 years he has spent with us. And that we have known him, spent time in his presence, both physically and spiritually. John Russell was a good man, sometimes full of bluster and bravado, but always gentle and kind and loving and charismatic with a compelling personality that inspired a deep level of devotion, confidence, and without question, immense respect from everybody that met him. Today, his youngest brother, Sherwin, sent her on a text, and he described Russell like this, a man with a room illuminating smile, and he's so correct. Russell would walk into a room and light it up. So, as we grieve, individually and collectively, some silently, some openly, with or without tears, let's all remain aware that in the words of poet Khalil Gibran, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. Let me say that again, because it has deep meaning. Your joy is your sorrow unmasked. Consider that the depth of the sorrow we are experiencing right now may well be completely in line with the depth of joy that we have experienced from knowing Russell and being in his presence. Some of us from time to time, like me, right? It has certainly been that way for me over the years that I've known him, but others will have seen him and interacted with him much more regularly, especially his wife, his beloved Janet, who would see him every day. Think about that. Think about that, folks. Your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And to help us deal with our joy and our sorrow in the future, Khalil Gibran explains, he says that when you are joyous, look deep into your heart and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow 
that is giving you joy. And when you are sorrowful, look again at your heart and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. So I invite you to think beyond what we are experiencing now and think about the presence that Russell will continue to have in our lives. There may hardly be a day that goes by without us feeling his presence, for he shall forever be in our collection of lingering thoughts. Such is the nature of Russell's legacy. If he could in some way summarize that legacy for us, it would probably be something like what Beyonce sings in her song titled, I was here. He would perhaps say to us, I want to leave my footprints on the sands of time. Know there was something that I left behind. When I leave this world, I'll leave no regrets. I'll leave something to remember so they won't forget. Now, on, on Russell's behalf, I'd like to leave everyone with this thought about your own legacy. Here I am talking about the legacy of John Russell Loney. But I remember Russell saying to me sometime, words to the effect, not exactly like this, but you must always think about the future because that's where you're going to spend the rest of your life. And how would you like to be remembered? And that conversation was about Russell explaining to me when he had first moved to New York and what his experiences were and how hard he had to work to get people to see him for who he really was. Being an immigrant, being a black man in the United States, in New York City, he had to work a little harder to get people to understand him for who he truly was. So I'm putting it to you on his behalf. How and for what would you like to be remembered? We cannot undo elements of the past, but we can all continue to shape and reshape our legacy. That collection of our behaviors, relationships, achievements, experiences, whatever will make up this future that we are still here to enjoy. So I invite you to think about the eulogy that someone will develop and deliver for you at the appropriate time. And Russell would want us to think about that. Because in more recent times, I've been having a lot of conversations with him, albeit on the phone. And Russell would always say something to me that makes me look ahead and think about the future. Right? The only real chance that we have to shape that legacy is while we are still physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mindfully present on this planet and consciously interacting with others in a respectful, genuine, productive, and meaningful way as he spent whatever time he spent with me. So, eternal rest grant unto our brother John Russell and let perpetual light and our enduring love shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery your servant, John Loney, 
who has gone to his rest in Christ may share in the joy of his resurrection. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 14, verses 7 to 12. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
resurrection and the life says the Lord he who believes in me even though he dies he shall surely live reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If they were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Dear sisters and brothers, there are always two sides of the ceremony as we celebrate the life of John today. First of all is the uh, the reality that it is sad for the immediate family and those who are closely associated with him for so many years, leaving with you so many precious memories, so many human interactions, so many stories of bonding in the family and so on. And yes, those uh, memories to part and to say goodbye and to say farewell to the person who established them is a sad day. We know it will be a sad day. And grief and mourning and sadness of death always, each person faced this in a different particular way. As you know, sometimes it goes on for weeks and months, and God himself takes us through, as Jesus said, blessed are those who grieve, they shall be comforted. And that is the reality. A sad day where we say farewell, so long, goodbye. Departing. From this world, returning back to God. In the midst of that, when we enter the church, we sing and enter into Jerusalem and praise God, and we celebrate and we sing and so on. So that's the other side of the reality. That what we see before us, sad as it may be, gloomy, dismal, whatever, Jesus will call that. This is his moment of glorification. And some of the things that Jesus revealed to us, we really hold on to those hope and our faith that what we see before us is not the end, but with God, there are always new beginnings. Jesus said God is a God of the living. All time belongs to him, and therefore there are no endings, but only new beginnings. And in this context, we remember some of the things Jesus told us. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. In fact, whenever we see a coffin and so on, we always remind ourselves, this is what Jesus came for, you know, to destroy death forever and to open back the gates of paradise so that all of us will find that place of solace, happiness, eternal glory, that he won for us, for those of us who believe. Today he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still. So we are sad and we grieve and we mourn and we have the period of bereavement and so on. Trust in God still. In the face of all the death and dying that we see every day, trust in God still. Whatever life throws up in front of us, 
trust in God still. And that he mentioned, you know, how he has gone to prepare a place for us. And when that place is ready for us, he will return to take us. And that's another way of saying, as he said once, nobody know the day, the time, or the hour. And therefore, whenever we attend a funeral ceremony, it's always about us. Eh? Sometimes it's more about us than the dead. It's about us to remind us that life is a precious gift that comes from the giver of all life, God himself. And the parting lessons are the same. Celebrate our lives. Cherish the person around us. Do the things we want to do today. Don't procrastinate. Time is fleeting. We are only pilgrims. We are passing through. We are fellow travelers. One day it will all end. In the meantime, whatever God has given to us in this life, we celebrate, we rejoice, and we make the best use of it. Do not let your hearts be troubled, trust in God still. And so we place John before the goodness of God in the midst of grief and sadness. We trust in God still that he has entered into the new life, the better life that exists for us, the life with no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sadness, no more sickness, no more growing old and no more death and dying. With thoughts like these, we celebrate his life and all the many years that he interacted with us, and may God accept him in his kingdom and have mercy on his soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn to God in prayer as we stand, praying that God will give us his strength to face all the troubles and sorrows and sadness of life. As we remember John, God the Almighty Father, made him in this world for a limited time and has taken him back to himself. God our Father who raised Jesus Christ, his son from the dead, with confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead, especially John Russell Loney, whom God in his wisdom has called out of this world. Lord, hear us. For John Russell Loney, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may be now be admitted to the company of the angels and saints in God's everlasting kingdom, to the place that Jesus has prepared for him for all eternity, Lord, hear us. For a brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, the food of immortality, that he may be raised up on the last day of judgment as Jesus himself promises us. Lord, hear us. For all our departed relatives and friends, especially those we met during their lifetime, so many persons have gone before us. And for all who have helped us, that God will give them the reward of their kindness and their goodness to us a hundred times over in his kingdom of heaven. Lord, hear us. For all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God, the giver of life, face to face. Lord, hear us. For the immediate family and friends of our brother John, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, trusting in the wisdom of God, which is far beyond our human comprehension, knowing that grief and sadness is part of our journey to God. Jesus himself wept and cried over the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here to thank God for life, to live every day as if it's our last day, to celebrate life to the fullest, knowing that one day God will call that life back to himself and that we too will be gathered again one day in God's everlasting kingdom. Lord, hear us. 
We join our voices in prayer as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us as the model of all prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, the giver of life, you made each one of us on, in this life for a reason and a purpose and a mission and a journey and a pilgrimage. You will always be our protector, our strength, and our shelter. You will always listen to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for all our departed brothers and sisters whom you have called out of this world, especially today as we celebrate the funeral of John Russell Loney. Cleanse them all of all their sins that they may have committed out of human weakness and grant them the fullness of redemption in your everlasting kingdom of heaven. We have a meditation song.
Dear sisters and brothers, trusting in God, we have prayed for John Loney in this church. And now we come to the last farewell. There will always be sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope. We hold on to our faith that one day we shall see John again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow and sadness, the mercy and compassion of God will gather us together one day in the joy and celebration of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is the only one who can give life, and he has made each one of us special in this life for a reason, a purpose, a mission, a journey. So we'll bless the body of John and incense his, his body because this body, the temple of the Spirit of God, was made by the very hands of God himself as we celebrate his life. For this we will sing into your hands. we commend our dear brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Jesus Christ he will rise with him on the last day we give you thanks for the blessings that bestowed upon John in this life they are signs to us of your goodness to him and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ merciful Lord turn toward us and listen to our prayers open the gate of paradise today to your servant and help all of us who remain on this earth to comfort one another with assurances of faith, hope, and charity until we all meet in Christ and are with you, with our brother, forever and ever. Amen. We have gathered here to commend our brother John Russell Loney to God our Father and to commit his body to the earth, the elements of the earth, in the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we raise our voices and prayer and song and offer our prayers that John will make this journey today into the everlasting kingdom of God. Because God has chosen to call our brother John Russell Loney from this life to himself, we commit his body to the elements of this world for we are all dust. And unto dust 
we shall all return. Jesus Christ promises to change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory for he has truly risen the first to be born from the dead so let us commend our brother John to the Lord that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day as we stand we bow our heads and pray for God's blessing protection and guidance as we too walk through this world as pilgrims Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive with the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may the peace of God which is beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the angels and saints lead you today, John, into God's paradise. May all the holy men and women and prophets and martyrs come to welcome you. May they lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem that shall never pass away. And may all the choirs of angels of God sing and welcome you and lead you to the prophets and to the bosom of Abraham. Where Lazarus is poor no longer, May you find your well-deserved peace, happiness, eternal rest forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us always go in the peace of Christ. Thanks Amen. be to God. Once again, on behalf of the entire Loney family, we thank you all for your kind presence to this ceremony. And for the recessional song, we have all I ask of you in our hymn sheets.
Thank mm-hmm. you.